Right, so if uh, the speakers could please come up so we can begin our panel. Um, and if anybody has a question, I can, um, for Felix or anybody in general, but Felix would be good to start with, and I can start passing the mic out. Questions? All right, Yarek. I didn't get it. Did you get singularity there at the end or yes. not? Oh, good. Okay. Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> the cool thing was a, a friend of a colleague. A colleague actually found somewhere some singularity containers and just tried it out. And then they asked him, all right, OK, use it. So it was the brute force approach. You know? To stay friends with them, ask them to install Podman now. <laughs> Podman. Podman? Podman. OK. New, new, new. Sorry, I, don't, I don't talk to them that much as long as it works. So. No, that's not, not a disrespect. I don't want to mean, mean in that sense, but it's really, I didn't mention that before, it's different understanding of how compute works. And there was already, or how computers, n how HPC systems are built for. And it's not what, we, what I do, or what, what we do, I think. Simulations, and we do data, data crunching. All right, um, and if you have questions for Pedro, um, you can put them in Matrix, and then at some point I'll grab the mic and we'll let him speak, or rather we'll give another try for this technical experience, so. <laughs> All right, next question. Oh, you, you put a question, oh, ooh. Uh, sorry, give me a moment. Um, So my, my, I'll just um, narrate it for the for the audience here. So I, I was totally intrigued by, by by the presentation, and and the question I had is, would this also work in a distributed way? So the the, the there, there's a, a a problematic use case uh, that we we always have to deal with, which is um, not everybody has access to all the data, and so if I have a workflow to compute that actually requires the computation to happen geographically logistically, uh, legally different entities, um, I think what your system is, is basically a to-do list compiler. So as long as, a, as a, if, if I have access to the, the data sets, then I should be able to use your tooling to figure out what still needs to be computed. And then the sites would know what type of nodes in the workflow they could compute. And then they could compute and then push that back and advance the state of the to-do list, basically. I don't know if that reached you, <laughs> but I would be super happy <laughs> to get your comments on that. I think we need to count now. Is it 30, 30 seconds lag? We'll find out. So. And there was me. <laughs> <laughs> Did he hear anything? Hello, Houston. Oh. oh. We'll give him about 30 more seconds. I, I, I'm like, this is like the hill I'm gonna die on. Like, I really wanna make this work. Um, uh, yeah, but he is muted on his side also. Um, huh? I guess I, I can hear you loud and clear, so. but uh, I think it's a beautiful lag. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's gonna be 30 seconds. Okay. How long would it be to Mars? I think we should stop communication from our side. And just let it. Well, but the text was instant, so that's why I was going for that, but. Of course. This is so weird. Uh. <laughs> Almost. Okay, okay. I think we'll we'll go for questions. That is, does is there anybody else here with a question? Perhaps not for Pedro. Like there is matrix for that. Like he is available there. Yeah, I think I think if the best is I just take all this uh, all the questions and then um, maybe I reply on the. Okay, um, yeah. I think we're gonna go for. I didn't quite understand that. Yeah. Did anybody else? Okay, yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I like that. So, um, other questions for our other panelists here? Uh, Yark. <laughs> I enjoy. Okay. Um, so, all of you. 
kind of enjoyed working with data-led run or some other run. Let's say Joe worked with Reprimand run, which was a little bit different, right? So there is different ways to collect prominence or orchestrate. What you feel could be done more in data-led or should be done less in data-led and which technologies, that was exciting session because like all these additions on data-led run of some kind were implemented some of them without our knowledge, which was great, right? So it's something was missing. Do you feel like there is more to improve in data led to facilitate this compute specifically or recomputation? I hope it's not too abstract. All right. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, I guess, yeah, so I was using Reaper Man for really the, the run component of it. So I don't know, I guess, I think Chris passed on to me that maybe no one else is using Reaper Man except for me mm -hmm. in the world. Is that You're true? You're the user. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, yeah, I, I don't know if it's really worth like pondering, you know, development in, in Reaper Man if that's the case, but that, you know. There is yeah. nothing, it's like, I, I, as I talked to Kyle, who is the author of that piece actually, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it's like in commercial settings, you would have also the user within company and that's it, right? So it's like you yeah. develop some code, some scientists use, and here is the code which facilitated computation over hundreds of data sets. So I think it's already a success, right? True. But now, now your execution script for that one wasn't just that mega line, there was a script to run it, right? So you had to recompute, for instance, whenever some jobs fail. How could we improve, let's say, Reprimand to make it automated? That could be one of the improvements within Reprimand. Yeah? Yeah, I'll, I'll have to think about that. <laughs> I don't have anything off the top of my head. <laughs> but maybe if anyone else Okay, we could All pass right. to Joy. Uh, I'll yeah. bombard you more at the dinner or somewhere else. <laughs> So uh, for Julius, um, you had mentioned as one of the minuses in using, uh, well, Data Lad uh, was getting uh, getting grad students to be able to use Windows Subsystem for Linux, which I can yeah. understand that being a problem. Um, <laughs> given that Git Annex does run directly on Windows, um, I don't know if Data Lad does, but did you consider that and what might have been the stumbling blocks? Mm -hmm. So. You nodded when, when you asked for data led working directly on Windows, right? I, I think I tried it, but it failed pretty early, so I decided to not go for it any further. Um, I mean, maybe I should give it a try again. I don't know. Um, it, it, it's, Git Annex might also be more buggy on Windows, so there are <laughs> trade offs. <laughs> yeah. But the thing, the thing with, with data led, in my opinion, is that uh, like the handbook, for example, is very user friendly, so I think this is definitely a a pro for it, so uh, I think this might make it, even for people that are not that familiar with Git, approachable just by like following the handbook in the first, I don't know what chapters. Um, and I think Git, Git Annex doesn't have this, right? Or some as far as good documentation, like on the order of the day led handbook, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I guess that's uh, that's why probably it still makes sense to use data lab. Maybe I will give it a try again to just use Windows for it, but yeah. yeah. I can say that there have been some fearless users who have just run right into the Windows ecosystem and it's, it's actually worked. And um, the biggest limitation has been NTFS's joys. So. Here we go. See, it's not our problem. It's the file system. <laughs> I, I never said that, that there aren't problems. It's <laughs> not <laughs> inodes, but lack of symlinks, right? So it, it, Git Annex works, but then in adjusted branches mode. Yes. And then, let's say, anything with submodules become already tricky, right? So data lets should work, but it becomes yet another hurdle. And sometimes things go, indeed, a little bit odd, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why Subsystem for Linux provides you a little bit more pleasant abstraction from the file system, let's put it this way. Hi, I really enjoyed all of your use cases. I have the question, it seemed to me across these use cases that you basically adapted already running pipelines uh, and, and used them. Have you ever tried to use these tools also in a forward fashion where you're really starting off with trying to solve a problem, but you're actually building the code as you go. So you're not working from something that already runs, just not with data lab potentially, or not as efficiently as it could but actually starting from scratch. 
you mean starting like the whole workflow from scratch? the whole coding workflow from basically getting the data into running things to the end so basically not yet knowing what the code base will look like at the end I'm not entirely sure whether I got the question right, but the like one thing I I showed like the intermediate step where we had this HDF5 file that was just running through, is somehow maybe that like this, but a very obviously very basic version, right? But you also want to say something. Yeah. So if I, what I try when I'm playing around with data -led data sets that I have, but I don't, I'm trying to develop something. I don't put it in data -led run or anything yet, but. What I really like, what was mentioned before, is that I clone a data set, I get the files I need on my laptop in, in a similar um, environment, and I can run anything and produce files and, and until I actually get, get the output I want. And if I have this, I can just re roll the data set back, basically get reset hard, and only keep the code, and then run any with data led run. The stuff and this is really really nice. I mean, this is one of my favorite features of Data Lad that I, which I'm trying to to sell to people that are. Do I actually need to go to Data Lad? I mean, it's it's uh, to to extend the end. The first is easy download. Second, play around, don't break, and in the end, do the same with Data Lad run before, and you have it it's safe basically, and for free upload it with like three commands. Not everybody listens, basically, to these arguments, but, then, but I try them out for two years now, and some, sometimes it gets there. But if that answers the questions, I think really it's the playing around with data without being, taking care of what I do. And this is, is I really enjoy it by this, by, by using data in that sense. And maybe to, to the um, question before, in the fairly big workflow, we have built in, or Michael, you put in, the set minus e minus u, I think, that it crashes, anything goes wrong in the bash, there's no output at all. Basically, and this basically comes to that if anything is half or anything, I never get output. And this is the thing, but this is not data lab, basically. This is basically that I can, more, can be more lenient in complex workflow with parts. It's compact mat, it's the, the units of the output is, is another. I didn't allude to that before, but I think that's important as well, because the units of my computations are, it's another of these trade-off parts. I don't want to do every single part in, uh, in, in separately, because the complexity goes skyrockets, but if I put everything in, I can, it's not easy to follow up or to reuse. So I think there's something in between as well that depends on the tool or the data on whatever. But that might be a way of data led run to, to recommend something in terms of how long it runs, how much data it uses, I don't know, to make it clear to the people how to use data led run in an efficient way, if, if that goes in the direction of, of the answer. So as, as more as recommendations and not as additional tool there. All righty, next question. Thanks. It's not a question about inodes this time. <laughs> um, it's a question about the term you have used, reproducibility. What do you mean with that? As in, you mean to run the experiment, get some results, and then have a look at them? Or you're talking about a bit-for-bit -bit reproducibility of the output of a pipeline? It's So very short, reproducibility is just run the same thing, get the same output. You can run the same thing, meaning same input, same data, and uh, same method. And then bit identical, we can discuss that. Not, uh, there's optimization, there's rounding. and So that, that was the question. replicability means maybe different data, different methods. I mean, there are, these, there are nice ways of putting this out. But I think the whole thing is underestimated and disregarded too often. And reproducibility is the easy part where we can say, that's what I did, and I can rerun it. And we should be able to rerun it on different systems without a difference. Otherwise, we are, it's a, even a bigger problem. And, you know. yeah, my, the, the question in my question was, if you do not have a bit-for-bit -bit, uh, reproducibility, what do you do with the results? You like highball them? You, show them side by side, and you see if the numbers match. I mean, my, my opinion there is it depends on what you, what you want. If you know your optimizer doesn't give deterministic output, 
you're good. Then you should be, the difference you find shouldn't, should be small enough to not be mistaken for an effect between, between of e experimental manipulation, for example, or far enough away. I mean, look, at, that's your statistics. And so the, it's hard to generalize, or you cannot generalize this. But maybe that's a question beforehand, that before you save your output and hash it, round it to the to maybe to a level which which we talked about before that you know it's comparable and maybe be conservative there that the bits identical outcome you actually can verify in data lab is reliable that you can e automatically know if it's reproducibility that's that's my feeling there all right thanks next question even if it includes inodes, that's. <laughs> okay, I think everybody might be feeling it after a after a long day of uh, of data lads. So, I'd just like to to thank absolutely everybody, um, all the panelists here, everybody who gave a talk, and then all of the questions, all the members here. I'm really struck by the diversity of topics that we had just even in the first day. And yeah, I, I think this is a really cool collection of people. So I hope everybody enjoys all of the food and drink that Dusseldorf has to offer. And we'll see you.